Hello, welcome to antique.com. Today I'm looking at a Compaq Prosignia VS. This is a 486 66 megahertz server from Compaq dating from 1992-1993. Inside this machine, there is a very handy guide to all the jumper settings for hard drives and the motherboard. This will come in handy a little bit later. Internally, it's fairly empty at the bottom. There are no EISA or ISA cards in this. Everything is on board. So there's a small airflow restriction clear plastic window so Apple you weren't the first to get to this so internally we don't really see much as I say none of the uh, riser cards are populated but this has a 50 pin onboard SCSI as well as a traditional floppy lead the SCSI is going off to this unit here where there are three one gig SCSI hard drives I had previously removed those hard drives because not all of them were being found. One or two of them needed the jumpers changing and more than anything I needed to position them correctly in the case and connect them onto the cable in the right order in order for everything to be found. Ordinarily with SCSI this isn't an issue but with this it took quite some time to move the hard drives around and change the SCSI IDs in order for all three hard drives to be correctly discovered. Okay, so just here we can see a cache slot so this motherboard can take additional level 2 cache normally 256k which means there is 256k on the motherboard but it can be upgraded to half a meg the processor just here is a DX266 processor so this is the fastest processor this motherboard will support there is 8 meg of onboard memory but I've also added 32 meg so that gives me 40 meg in total of memory I believe this machine will go up to 64 meg uh, of additional memory so that would make it 72 meg in total but 40 should be sufficient for this on the left here we see a four and a half volt battery which connects to the motherboard and this is what the uh, motherboard uses for its power when the mains is off to keep things like your clock settings correct unfortunately that is um, dead so what i've done is i've changed it for one of these units which is what i get off of ebay for a couple of three pounds uh, where you can just put three AAA batteries in, in uh, series to make four and a half volts and this in the same way that this just connects to the motherboard with a couple of pins so does this so uh, so this is now out and this unit here I'll velcro or, or duct tape or something uh, to the bottom of the case out the way in the corner um, and uh, it's doing a very nice job of keeping this motherboard uh, date and time correct. I guess the obvious thing you notice from this is that there is no CD-ROM. Um, this never came with a CD-ROM, it probably uh, only uh, came in around about the time the first CD-ROMs were uh, being manufactured. This is uh, quite literally came with software installed and if you wanted to add anything it was either through a floppy drive or via the network. This is actually running um, Novell Netware at the moment. Um, I believe it's an old tape server. Uh, we can boot, well, we'll boot it up and we'll have a little look at all the uh, uh, stuff that goes past the screen. But what I've done is I've got my um, trusty little parallel port 
CD-ROM drive, which we're mounting at the top here, and we'll be using that to set it up. So I'll be um, installing DOS and my Freecom uh, CD driver, and then we'll take it from there. Um, it's got three uh, hard drives, as I said, in here. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to set them all up uh, as one of the versions of NT, but first of all I need to get rid of the old NetWare version and most importantly I need to preserve the hidden partition that's on this hard drive that enables us to run all the setup programs and diagnostics etc for this machine. So um, let's switch it on and see what we've got. So this is the compact utility that's on one of the little um, hidden partitions I mentioned earlier. So first things, check date and everything. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So it has a configuration, operating system installation, diagnostics, etc. So let's have a look at that. So this should be fairly similar to all other Compact 486s from the mid to early 1990s. My Compact Desk Pro, for example, and my Presario both have this program. Okay, so this is the Compaq ProSignia VS. It's a 486 server that normally comes with three SCSI 1 gig hard drives, um, 57 meg of RAM, it's 316s plus 8 meg on board, and it's a DX266 processor. Um, I say it came with three hard drives, you'll notice I've replaced it with a cassette SCSI uh, CD-ROM so that I can load an alternative operating system and the hard drive that I've taken out um, even though I've tested it and it works fine it works fine on its own but is not happy to operate where there are other hard drives it's probably because it's pulling a fair old current I mean you've only got to look at this thing to uh, see that it, it's, quite a, uh, it's quite a beefy hard drive um, on the same power rail it fails to boot but on a separate power supply it's fine so it's probably just getting old and tired, so I'm retiring that hard drive, leaving me two 1 gig hard drives and the CD-ROM drive. I couldn't get the floppy drive to work for a while. It would seem to find a, uh, a floppy drive but do nothing and I kept rebooting and twiddling around with cables etc. And then I remembered I had this configuration thing here. And one of them is that as it's a server uh, and the case would probably be locked, the last thing you'd want is it to boot from a floppy drive. So it has a dip switch that enables you to disable the floppy drive. So um, I've just spent the best part of three quarters of an hour um, faffing around, changing cables, swapping CD-ROMs over, checking that the floppy drive actually um, is a working floppy drive. Uh, the disk itself, um, 
only for it to be a dip switch. So um, here we go. Right, okay, so it's found the hard drives. So um, that I'm going to delete. So I've taken a bit of a risk and a gamble there. I think that small little 10 meg partition was the actual DR-DOS 6.0 uh, that was part of the netware installation and the unknown uh, disk partitions from there onwards were actually the Novell itself. The EISA partition is the compact partition which I do need to keep so I've kept that, got rid of the rest and I'm now formatting one of the drives. Okay, so uh, back to the compact again. Um, for the last few days, I've been uh, moving various hard drives around, uh, external CD-ROM drives, an uh, internal SCSI CD-ROM drive. Unfortunately, that didn't work, so the only CD-ROM drive I've got that I can actually attach to this machine is an external parallel port drive, which is a uh, Freecom, um, classic uh, which uh, adds complexity to things so my original idea for this machine was to um, repeat what I've done on an earlier machine not so long ago in a video which was to put a, a version of um, Windows NT on this uh, that became unsuccessful because the only drivers that I've got for the Freecom are Windows 9X or DOS uh, or 3X so that the basic consumer desktop software or I have a driver for NT4 um, which I thought well I'll give it a try unfortunately all it does is it causes a blue screen of death um, so there's an incompatibility in the piece of software there so um, Apart from going out and spending money on either a SCSI CD-ROM drive, which is wholly inexpensive, um, finding an external uh, SCSI CD-ROM drive with a relevant cable even more expensive, or I thought I might try a third option, which was to uh, install an IDE uh, CD-ROM drive, but then I would need uh, an EIA EISA adapter card and they are incredibly rare so I seem to keep going round in circles that there's not really a lot I can do unless I spend a lot of money so um, I'm gonna go a different route which is from where I normally go uh, I normally tend to try and put the most appropriate operating system that this particular uh, base unit that I'm filming at the time would have had so uh, here we have a compact uh, 486 server so this probably would have had uh, Novell Netware which is actually what it did have when I got it um, probably something like uh, OS2 or one of the very early uh, Windows NT3 uh, or uh, 3.5 or 3.51 NT systems um, I could download a copy of NT uh, 3.1, 3.5 or 3.51 on floppy disk 
but um, I'd end up with a pile of floppy disks this high and it would make for an incredibly boring video. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to plump with um, DOS and Windows 3.1 uh, for now uh, and just park this one off to one side, um, making sure that everything's working as it should be. Uh, and you never know, at a later date, um, a nice SCSI CD-ROM drive that works may appear and or I may actually um, get to the point where I, I've managed to diagnose the problem of the existing SCSI CD-ROM drive and take it from there. Um, so either way, I'm just going to finish this machine off with a, a DOS and a Windows 3.11 installation and use that just to prove the machine's working okay and uh, as I say, I'll probably wrap the video up at that point. Okay, so DOS is installed, so I'll do the uh, parallel uh, CD-ROM driver and I'll do things like the mouse and DOS shell etc. Okay, so in theory CD-ROM is on E-Drive. Yep, so the CD-ROM is working. Unfortunately, I can't install uh, NT351, which is the disk that's in here, directly from the CD-ROM. You need to boot it from the floppies. When you boot it from the floppies, it then loses the CD-ROM driver, and I don't have an NT351 driver for the parallel port CD-ROM drive, so it's a bit of a catch-22. Hence why I'm not going to be installing NT351, I'm going to go with Windows 3.1 instead. So, I've also now got Microsoft Office Professional 4.3, which I'm going to put on here as well. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the installation because it's 31 floppy disks. And no doubt one or two of those floppy disks will be uh, corrupted and I'll have to uh, play around a bit. But when we come back, hopefully Office will be installed as well. Okay, that's plenty for part one of this video. So this compact VS server will feature in another video very soon. Uh, I'm just awaiting some replacement parts of this machine that should hopefully get me uh, the NT351 up and running the way I originally planned it and not this compromise which the last half of this video has been. Anyway, if you've enjoyed watching, please subscribe 
please leave me some comments and if you really do like it then maybe press the like button. 